Welcome. We're going to work out using the chair and the blocks, a strap if you have one, anything will do, a belt or something resistant, light weights of two different sizes, I have a 5 and a 10, and a stability ball if you have one. And a cat would help too. <laughs> If you don't have a stability ball, I'll give you options using just the chair. So sit on your chair and begin to roll your head. Inhale on the upward movement, exhale down. Take your time, it's like drawing circles with your nose. Change directions. Stretch your arms overhead and back down to the sides, looking up as the arms lift. Hands back down by your sides, chin down. Inhale up, exhale down. Interlace your hands and stretch them up above your head. Straighten your arms as much as possible. Stretch them out in front of you, palms facing you and above your head. So now we're stretching the outer wrists at a side bend to each side. Spinal twist by taking hold of the chair behind you. Stay tall in this. Wrap around the other way. Try not to hunch. Pat your cat. <laughs> hold the back of the chair and drop forward. This is a beautiful stretch through your shoulders. Place one foot onto the other leg. Let's do some foot circles here. Nice for the ankles, holding the toes, stretching them as well. Doesn't matter how high up the knee is. You may not have very flexible hips. It's okay. Switch sides. You might crack the toes a little, no harm in that. It's super duper hot where I am right now. <laughs> no AC and about 33 degrees Celsius here in Montreal. I'm applying a little light pressure to the knee. This is helping to stretch out the hip. Don't push too hard. No need for pain. Other side. Lift the leg and open and close it like a book, tapping the toes down onto the floor. Another nice one for the hip. I work with people with hip replacements and this is a nice one for keeping mobility in the hip area. Span to the side and tap down. I'm holding my chair for stability. I'm in a very light wobbly Ikea chair so it wobbles with me as I move keeping it secure. Lengthen your legs and flex your feet, pointing and flexing alternate feet. Nice one at the end of the day when you've been walking a lot, trapped in shoes. Let's open and close the feet like a book. Open together, open together. Interlace your hands under the leg along the hamstrings and lift and lower like you're doing the can-can. If you can't straighten the leg completely, that's fine. Just kick it out there. Switch legs. Let's try the warrior pose on the chair. This can also be done on a stability ball. So actually sit, my weights are a little bit in the way here, if I may say correct, and expand. So this helps you drop the weight down and deepen that stretch in the hips. Lean onto the front leg, reach up, look up, feel the stretch through your waist and hip. Drop down the extended leg and side bend.
Let's switch sides by simply bending the other leg and lengthening the opposite one. Open up and lean forward, drop onto the bent leg. Expand open, feel the spinal twist here. Dancing warrior, drop down the extended leg, reach up, inhale. And now legs as wide open as you can. Hold the front of the chair, a little back bend. Wonderful for the chest and hips. Let's stand. I'm using the chair as a ballet bar, essentially. Coming into first position, your feet are like they're holding a little piece of pizza. Watch that you don't slump forward or hyper arch back, but straight up tall, slight engagement in the glutes. Hand on the front and back can help notice if you're arching. Let's just come up to toes and down. This is working your calves. Keep your chest wide open. Oh, there's a white cat leg in the front here. <laughs> up and down. Strengthening Achilles heels and calves. Let's pulse at the top. You can hold your chair for balance if need be. Take it to second position where your hips are over top of your heels. We'll do the same thing. Notice that my feet are pointing out to 10 and two o'clock, not to three and nine o'clock. We're on an angle here. Hold at the top, balance again. Watch you don't drop your hips forward. Let's plie. So notice here I'm not bending forward it's not a movement at the hips. It's at the knees. Imagine your back is sliding up and down a wall. We've got that angle with the foot out to 10 and two o'clock. Knees are not knobby and I'm not pointing, as I said, to three and nine o'clock like this, but on an angle. Slide up and down. So if your hips are really tight, there will be some forward bent movement in the upper body. This is normal as you get more flexible. It'll be easier to plie. Plie is simply French for bend. Plie, les genoux. Bend the knees. To make this more challenging, you can come on to toes and pulse. If you need to, keep your heels on the floor. If you option of bringing your arms into first, I always say it's like holding a ball in front of your chest. This is a great strengthener for your knees. March it out. Let's do a chair downward dog. Where you just drop down and your back is doing the same thing it does in downward dog. It's lengthening. Bend one leg and drop through that side and the other. Lift one leg straight out. Keep your hip facing the ground and pulse. I'm pulsing for 30. As high as possible, the goal is parallel to the floor or higher if you want, but maintain the hip facing the floor. Then bend your knee and push the sole of the foot to the ceiling. Same thing, just pulsing. Watch that you're not locking in the knee of the standing leg. Yield slightly here. Now I'm turning it to dog at the fire hydrant. The goal is that the bent leg is parallel to the floor. If you don't have flexible hips, you may have your leg a little bit lower than mine. Pump it up and down. Notice the angle, it's a 90 degree angle. This is a tough one. Bring elbow to knee and extend for the obliques. Elbow meets knee, stretch them both out. Standing leg is working hard as well. My chair is low, so I'm leaning my forearm onto it. If you have a higher chair, you may not be doing that. Let's do some hula hoops before going to the other side. The cat's back. <laughs> Switch directions of your circling. Sure. 
All right, let's lift the other leg, holding the chair, extending through your back. And pump. Let your knee and hip face the ground. Keep the glutes engaged. I have pointed toes. You can opt for flexed feet if you wish. Bend your knee and pump it up. Sole the foot toward the ceiling. Rotating. Now you see it from this side. The dog at the fire hydrant. Let's try to create a parallel angle from the leg to the floor and pump that. This is really working the outer hip. Elbow to knee. Extend. Wait, lost my balance with my wobbly chair. <laughs> Continue if you fall or need a one second rest, just come on back. This is a great one for the obliques, the lateral ab muscles. Walk it out. This time we'll do the willow tree where you just sway the arms, let them float in the air like a tree in the wind, moving spinal twist. I like to follow a hard one with something easy like this, just to catch our breath and stretch. So you remember, you can always have your chair in front of you if you prefer, it doesn't have to be at the side. Second position plie, leg kicks out to the side. So I'm not using anything to hold. This one would be easier to hold something in the front if you needed to hold something at all. Plie kick, plie side kick. Don't kick your cat or step on its tail. <laughs> We're doing eight per side here. Pendulum swing. Swaying side to side. One it's in front, one's behind. Once in front, one's behind. Great for hip mobility. Circling out the standing foot. I'm switching the chair to the other side so I can hold on here. And swing in front, swing behind. There goes my teenage mutant ninja gamer. Swaying. Not super difficult, but very effective for hip mobility. Walk it out. Circle the standing foot. There goes the teenage alien again. Okay. I'm tucking my knee into the back of the other knee. I can kick it out. Bend and out. As you kick it out, come a little bit forward. Bend, kick. Make sure the knee makes contact with the back of the other knee. For more challenge, you could do this on tippy toes.
Um, because I have a low chair, I'm able to bring my palms onto the seat of the chair as I come into bow pose. Try to reach your foot behind you and draw it up tall. If you can't quite take the foot, you can just hover it in the air and reach toward it or grab a strap and wrap it around your ankle. Let's do that same exercise, other leg. Bend, send it away, kick off. The lower you bend, the more work it is. Come into a bow pose. Try to straighten the standing leg, or a micro bend is acceptable as well. Feel the hip opening up. Excellent stretch through the hip flexor and shoulder. Nice back bend. Good work. Shake it out. Let's interlace behind, drawing your shoulder blades together, palms toward the earth. Little back bend here. forward bend. I always bend my knees at the start of the forward bend and then slowly begin to straighten them. This is because I have some herniated discs in my low back and I need to protect my low back. Let's do some easy push-ups. So I've got my chair since it's wobbly pushed against the wall for security. Flaring my elbows out, palms on the chair, bent knees is an option. A much harder version of this is to do it on the ball, ball against the wall, and or come into a plank-like pose, body long and straight, and you can hold the side of the chair like this, or the front of the chair, it's the one I prefer, pushing toward the chair, chest toward the seat of the chair, or to repeat the variation we just did in more of a table. Shaking it out, always following a hard one with a bit of a stretch. Let's continue to work the upper body. Take one heavy weight and one light weight. If you don't have weights, maybe you have water bottles with different quantities. So watch that you're not dropping forward or arching, but there's a slight forward pelvic tilt. Hold. Do not tuck the weight into your body, but there's a little space between your elbow and the body. This is the light weight. You're just going to hold the light weight still as you curl the heavy weight. Bicep curls. Stay engaged through the core and glutes. Pelvis slightly tilted forward, wide open chest. Resist the urge to press the still arm against the body. A harder variation would have the lighter weight sent straight out in front of you with a straight arm. We're doing eight per side. Again, it's right in there. Space between the arm and the body. Curl all the way from shoulder to leg. Try not to sway the body as you do these. I'm using a 10 and a five. You could use a five and a three, a three and a two, a knapsack full of books. Or in the lightweight side, nothing at all is an option. Okay, so for the tricep flies, Watch that you're not going far from the body. We want to actually stay close to the body. Keep the elbow close in, straight line behind you. See how the arm is aligned with the body. Let's do eight of these, in and out. 
Keep the back long and straight. Arm close to your body. I'm using a five for this one. I could probably use an eight as well. 10 is a little too much for me. And switch sides. This could also be done hand on a sofa, hand on, you could be kneeling and um, be leaning on the bent leg. But we have a chair, so let's use it. Okay, so take your heavy weights and we'll do half curls. Let's start with halfway up. So remember the stance. Engage the core and glutes, and I'm coming 90 degree angle to the floor. So resist the urge to pull all the way to the top. Only halfway. And back down again. Don't let the weights pull your hands down. If you feel like the weights are controlling the movement and not your arms controlling the weights, then you need to gear down to a lower weight. We're doing eight. So it's the same principle, halfway, but we'll go from the top halfway down. So watch that the weight doesn't fall past the halfway point, stopping halfway, bringing it back. Slight pelvic tilt forward, shoulders back, halfway down, halfway up. We're doing a set of eight. I'm using 10 pounds. You might be more comfortable with fives or 15s or 20s. But don't lose form just to use extra weight. So my stretchy band, I'm using the Arena Strength bands. They are cloth and they have elastic in the inside, or rather um, rubber on the inside that stick to you. In case you're sweaty or your pants are slippery. But any rubber band will do such as the slightly cheaper version. <laughs> These bands, they come in different resistance levels and you can get those at Dollarama or Walmart or wherever. So bring the band and pull the legs far enough apart that you feel resistance. So if you're just using a scarf or a belt, you won't get the same resistance without the elasticity. But the idea here is the resistance to pull against the band as we do chair lifts. Up and down. Depending on the resistance of your band, you may be taking a wider stance than me to get that resistance. For harder variation, come to tippy toes and pulse. the band in place, turning the chair around, using the back of the chair as a bar, and coming into a lunge. So coming up and down. There, here's where we really like that resistance in the band. Now I'm choosing to let go of the chair, but you can continue to hold as you pulse here. Really good one for the glutes and the quads. Staying on tippy toes with the back foot. Switch legs. Small movements, big results. Holding your chair as a bar, we're just lifting the leg out to the side. Excellent for the outer hips, gluteus medius. Depending on the resistance of your band, you may be able to stretch further than mine. Mine's a very tight band, which is harder. The arena pack comes with three resistances. This one's the medium resistance. Just pulsing. Try not to lean too much to the side. You can just turn around to do the other side or move your chair and lift that leg out to the side. 
Try not to wobble the body too much. The movement is in the leg and hip. And pulse. Pulling as hard as you can against the band. Let's do a little plie here. You've got resistance again. If you have knee issues, you may need to move the band or further up your legs. Let's come to the floor into a table position. I'm still wearing the band around my thighs for another glute exercise here. Just like we did standing, let's pulse the bent leg up. Now we're resisting against the band. It's right around mid thigh. So this particular exercise, switching sides, for me with my herniated discs, this is part of my physiotherapy. It's keeping the low back and the glutes strong to hold everything in place. Despite having six herniated discs, I've been able to avoid surgery by doing physio. So now I'm gonna kneel on the band and place the sole of my foot into it and push, resist. Now again, I have a really, really tight band, so I'm not going far. If I were using my elastic band, the plastic one, I would probably be stretching my leg out into a straight position behind me. So it all depends on your band. So mine's super resistant, I can only push this far. Again, another one for the glutes. Tighten up the booty. Now I'm switching, kneeling on it to keep it in place and sole the foot of the other leg to push back. Like, ideally kick back, but again, not with this band. It looks like I'm not doing anything, but if you could feel the resistance of my band, then you'd know it's actually a lot of work. So if you're not using a band at all, if I forgot to address that, then of course you could just be doing straight up in the air as we did standing. I find getting the props that I need for my home workout motivates me to use them. Now it's ball time. So I will give you an alternative if you don't have a ball. Right now we're going to do shoulder press. And you can certainly sit on your chair for this. The ball adds just a little bit more work because you need to resist the movement of the ball. So if you know the goddess pose in yoga, we'll do the goddess arms here, nice square arms. Watch that you're not drooping the elbows down like that, but your arms are square. Come up to the top, weights touch, bring it back down. You can also do this standing or in second position with a plie. I'm using tens here. Let's do a set of eight. I'm having to use my core strength to keep the ball in place. Rest the weights onto your lap. Let's stretch the arm. I'm just swinging one arm in front and hooking it with the other arm. So good for the shoulder. Switch sides, hook it in front, pull. All right, let's do the chest press next. After a few shoulder rolls. This is usually, the chest press is usually done at the gym with a resistance machine where you push in and out. So we'll do this with the weights. If you are on a ball like me, then make sure you don't start to slope back, stay upright. So take it again into a goddess stance and bring it together. Notice how I'm rotating my wrists. Back of the hands facing outwards as the weights come together. Notice if your elbows are drooping and if they are, switch to a lower weight or gain control. 
The ball is getting a little rolly for me. I'm having to really engage to hold it in place. Doing a set of eight. I'm going to get the weights out of the way for this next exercise as we'll utilize the whole mat and be on top of the ball. I will give you an alternative if you're not using a ball. What you could do is get a towel or a blanket and put it under your knees on a floor, it won't work on a carpet, and slide back and forth. Otherwise you're kneeling on the ball. This is a lot of fun, so if you don't have a ball it's a great investment. I think it was about 15 bucks this ball pump it up yourself. So you're kneeling and you want to lengthen out and then pull back in, in and out. There's a similar piece of equipment that does this where you roll this piece of equipment underneath your feet, rolling in and out. But the ball is really diverse. There's so much more you can do with it, so I prefer that. I'm doing a set of eight there as well. I'm going to demonstrate how you would do this with the towel or blanket on a hard surface, something that can slip. Move the mat out of the way, it won't work on a mat. And kneeling on it, slide it in, push it out, slide it in. I actually find these harder than on the ball, so <laughs> keep that in mind. If you find that four and you're done, or three even, then do know that that one is harder than the ball. So, I'm going to repeat the exercise with a harder variation. You can either be on your little towel, or try this harder variation on the ball, or go back to the variation that we just did. So the harder variation are the pikes. So just roll forward, wee, and bring the ball a little lower down your legs than before, just a little bit like you're in a plank, and then pull up into a pike position. You want to try to get your hips up above your shoulders as much as possible. If your ball needs air, as mine does, it's a little trickier because your toes sort of sink into the smushiness of the ball. It just requires more control, that's all. Right up into your pike and down. These are definitely harder, so you can just repeat last one if this is too much. A set of eight. It's primarily a core exercise, but is also working the shoulders. Oh, makes you want to lie down on your back, doesn't it? Let's do it. So I'm going to put my lower legs um, into the air and hold a prop. So if you don't have a ball, maybe you have a brick and you can just use that. We'll be lowering and lifting. Notice on the lift, I come down, and to come back, I pull bent knees in. This protects the lower back. You can alternatively just cycle like this. This is an easier variation. What you don't want to do is pull up from a straight-legged position, especially if you have any low back issues. You want to pull the knees in first. But if you have no back issues and super strong abs, you can take the straight leg lift if you wish. The ball is harder than the brick because it's bigger and heavier and requires you to use your thigh, your inner thigh muscles to keep it between your legs. It's normal if you drop it and it rolls away, just go get it. By the way, a small little beach ball can work here as well. Try to get the ball to tap the mat, pulling it back in. Work the inner thighs. Keep your low back grounded. If your low back is arching off of the floor, then you're taking your legs too low and you're pulling on the low back, which is not a good idea. So you may not go as low as me. To protect the back, pull in the ball. Take it down. Notice the here the breathing, the exhale is when you engage your core on the downward movement. Okay, we did a set of eight there. Now I'm resting my legs on the ball, but you can also use the chair for your lower legs. Simply lift, engage the glutes, and lower, lift, and lower. As I said, I like following a hard one with an easier one. This one's nice. 
Not too difficult. Feels good. Nice prep for shoulder stand, if you wish. As you feel the weight moving between your shoulders into the upper back. Harder variation would be to move the ball a little further away. Now it's no longer underneath my knees. Especially if you're using the ball, you have to really engage to keep it in place, pressing the calves and the feet into the ball. The hardest variation would be to only have your heels on the ball or chair. Nothing else touches. So to really engage through the hamstrings to get this one to work, pushing up and down the legs. My legs aren't straightening. If you can get your straight, that's excellent. Try one or two more. These ones are super hard. I do roll the ball a little bit as I press into it. Whew, take a breath, stretch it out. Relax on the ball or chair. If you are on the ball, you can rock it side to side like this. My little popcorn braids are hurting my head. <laughs> They're nice and cool in this heat, but not easy to lie on. Interlace your hands behind your hamstrings, ankle, or take your foot. Leg as straight as possible. Of course, the strap option. You can wrap that and pull. Lengthen as much as you can. Head toward the knee. We're stretching out the hamstrings that we just worked if you did that advanced variation. Switch. Take the same variation on this side. Holding the strap or leg or foot. And lift your head toward the leg. Loving it. Beautiful hamstring stretch. So this one, you can use the ball or the brick. We'll be coming up and down bringing the brick or ball in between your knees. This is an ab exercise. So whatever you're holding is behind your head and now just high enough to come between the knees. So notice I'm not very far off the floor. We're not doing a full sit up. Full sit ups are not good for your back. Evidently I am quite conscientious of back health, <laughs> especially low back. So lift and lower, it's just a half lift up. If you can't quite get the ball or the brick in between the knees, you just aim toward them. Remember the exhale is on the contraction. Breathing in to stretch back, breathing out to come forward. Stretch the entire body out in both directions. Lengthen. Deep breath. Let's take the legs into the air and lift the head just as we were doing before. I have to shift a little as the wall is in my way. S variation one is just lift with straight legs. Lift, arms toward the legs. This is variation one of upward facing boat. Now a little more difficult would be to have your legs extended and arms behind your head. Lift both. Now I'm coming up quite high with my arms. Or you can keep your arms close to the ground. Press the low back into the floor on the lift. Make sure you're not arching whatsoever. These ones are fairly difficult. Really press down through the low back and the glutes on the lift. A 
Let's just tick-tock the knee, bent leg side to side like windshield wipers. Recovering from that exercise. Pull it in to rock. One more arm strengthener. This one targets the shoulders. Lie on your side. Legs can be bent or stretched out. The arm is going halfway down only. Do not let it go further than halfway. You could do this with no weights. I'm going to use a 10 pound. So I'm landing my elbow on the waist or hip. Depends on your torso length. Lift and up. Halfway down only, don't let the weight pull your hand down to the ground. If that's happening, gain control or get a lower weight. Other side. You can just flip over. I'm turning around so I can still face you. And ground the elbow halfway down only. Forearms and shoulder work in here. Last one. Let's begin to really cool it down. Gentle table push ups, just like we were doing on the chair at the beginning. You can stay with that, or if you actually want to do a full push up, a little bit more arm work left. Imagine that your arms are strapped together. Here's a supported plank variation of that. I call this a triceps push-up. Notice that I'm not arching my back or rounding it up. You can also do it in full plank if you wish. Just don't collapse to the floor. Keep the integrity. I'm going to do four on my knees and then four full ones. Elbows aiming back on the way down. Don't collapse through the low back. And in the full plank. Notice the body is like a plank. It's lowering and lifting as one board, as one unit. To a side, bend on the knees, hands to brick or floor, or maybe just at your waist. Other arms stretches overhead, other side. And hula hoop here on your knees. Come onto your back for a reclined spinal twist. A beautiful way to end the workout. Make sure both shoulders are on the floor. Both shoulders are grounded down. You're not pulling up through one shoulder. Switch sides. Brilliant. Thank you for joining me in this easy upper and lower body workout. See you next time.